Hi, everyone. This is Heather Lawton from the Flourish Academy, which is a resource for photographers. We can help you improve your photography, master your editing, or start or grow a business should you so desire. But today's video is actually an excerpt from our Mastering Your Wacom Tablet series available on our website. In this video, I'm going to show you how I optimized my tablet to work as efficiently and effectively as possible with Lightroom. This course is 15 plus videos because I'm always adding more on how to use your Wacom tablet for things like Lightroom and Photoshop, but also in other areas. And right now, if you use the promo code YouTube upon checkout, it is $100 off. That link will be above, below, it'll be everywhere. I hope to see you inside of the course. In this video, we are going to optimize our Wacom tablet for Lightroom for a fun and efficient workflow. You can access your Wacom settings via the desktop center or by your system preferences. Let's begin by looking at our top panel. In the device section, I have my Intuos Pro Small selected along with the functions tool and applications are set to all other. What I'd like you to do is click the plus button in order to add Lightroom so that we can create specific settings for this application. If you do not see Lightroom in this dialog box, simply open it or browse to your applications folder and then choose OK. This is really important. There have been times when I have come into my tablet and I've made all of these changes to Lightroom when actually I had all other applications selected. So make sure that you have Lightroom selected. Now we're gonna have to make some decisions here about what keyboard shortcuts we assign to our keys. So I need to know what I'm up against. I am going to count how many things I can program. I have the Intuos Pro, so I have six express keys plus the touch ring. On the pen, I have two buttons plus the eraser. For a total of nine places that I can program keyboard shortcuts. Now, I didn't include the touch ring in that because I know that I'm going to use that for the brush size. It's just what makes the most sense. So how do you decide what you're going to program into these buttons? Well, let's jump over to Lightroom and you can go to the help menu and choose library module shortcuts or press command or control forward slash on your keyboard. And of course, this shows you all of the keyboard shortcuts that are available in the library module. If I just click to get rid of that and then press D to jump to the develop module, you can actually do the same thing by accessing the develop module shortcuts with command or control forward slash. I was going to recommend that you print these and highlight the keyboard shortcuts you use most often, but I decided to create a cheat sheet for you. So I'd like you to download this file. The first two pages are the library and develop shortcuts. I do think you should print these and highlight what you use most often, but I'm going to share several examples and use case scenarios highlighting my own workflow. So what I did is if you scroll down in this document, those shortcuts are duplicated, but this time I have check marks next to the ones that I used most often. So what I did was I sat down and I asked myself, what are the really important keyboard shortcuts to me? So if you look at this page, you'll see I use G all the time to enter the grid mode. I use E, C, N. I use the backslash key to hide or show the filter bar. I use the numbers to set ratings. I use X to reject photos. Some of you might actually use P to pick photos. Obviously you would select that for yourself. I use command shift I to import and command shift E to export. I use F2 to rename. I use a variety of the modifiers with the tab key in order to show or hide certain panels. I use T to show or hide the toolbar and I use D to access the develop model. I can already see I'm in trouble here because I said just a moment ago, I have nine keys that I can program and I have a lot of things checked in the library module alone. And if we jump down to develop, you'll see that there are even more keyboard shortcuts that I use. And I use these very often. I also added a few of my own in the bottom left that weren't listed, 
I use the backslash key to see my before and after as I'm editing all the time. I also use the bracket keys to make my brush smaller or larger. Okay, well, what do we do? Well, that was the first step. Let's identify what we use all of the time and then start to think about where it might be helpful to program this into the Wacom tablet. Now, as I started to think about these, I immediately realized that I have a situation. <laughs> and the situation is this. I need a key to be able to access my settings because it's going to take a while for me to memorize everything that I've programmed. So right now, it's that second key. And when I press that second key, this is what comes up. I need this because I'm going to forget what I programmed into everything again until it's committed to muscle memory. But the thing is, I don't want to give up that key because I have so many other things that I think are more important. So what I am going to do instead, now this is only going to work if you have the Intuos Pro that has the touchpad capabilities. I am going to, for a moment, jump into touch and I'm going to add Lightroom. You'll notice it was not there. You have to add it individually to each. So I have Lightroom added to touch. I'm going to select my gestures. I am going to make sure that five fingers swipe down is set to settings. <laughs> this one can be a little tricky to get used to, but if you put all five finger, four fingers and a thumb on your tablet and you swipe down, then this is what will appear. I know that seems a little much and I would agree with you, but I need to have access to this and I don't want to take up valuable real estate on my tablet that I would otherwise use for a keyboard shortcut, specifically in Lightroom. So I'm going to just verify that. Okay, that works. Now let's go back to functions. Again, making sure that Lightroom is selected. And to be honest, you just need to make some decisions and then change them if they don't work well. I'm going to begin by assigning this top button, the key stroke of Command Shift I for import. So I'm going to clear this. I'm going to press Command Shift I on my keyboard and then rename this to import and say, okay. I decided to assign the top key import and the bottom key export. I don't know, for some reason that made sense to my brain. So let's go ahead and do this bottom key keyboard, keystroke. This is Command Shift E for export. So let's name that and say, okay. I'm going to set this to the keystroke of O on the keyboard, and that's to show or hide the overlay when using masks. That's something I do all the time because I do a lot of retouching. So overlay and say, okay. I'm actually going to leave this as the modifier shift. And this will make sense when we jump back over to Lightroom because it has to do with the feather of the brush and the touch ring. Next, I'm going to change this keyboard to the keystroke of Q and that's for spot removal. This will be the keystroke of K for the adjustment brush. And we've already assigned this last key, export. Let's take a look at our pen. So again, when we select the pen, we have to add Lightroom to our application. And to be honest, I'm a little non-committal right here because I have a few things I would like to assign to my pen, but I'm going to begin by assigning this the keystroke of X to reject photos. This is my methodology in the library module to go through my images really quickly using the right and left arrow keys and then pressing X to reject. If you are the type of person that uses P to pick, you might wanna choose this here. Again, I'm not sure that this is gonna work out entirely the way I think, but it's a good start. For the top key, I'm going to change that one to D so that I can quickly jump to the develop module. Now I'll tell you why I'm hesitating and then say okay between this because I oftentimes find myself going back and forth between the develop module and the library module. So originally I thought instead of reject here or X that maybe I wanna make that the keystroke for the letter G, which is to jump to the grid. Therefore, the two buttons on my pen would take me back and forth between the library and develop module. I'm, I'm 
going to again test this and see how that works, but that's my backup plan or something I might want to try next. I'm actually going to program a keyboard shortcut into my eraser and it's going to be the backslash key. And the reason is I am constantly looking at the before and after of my image. So if I can just quickly tap a few times to see that, I think that would be really handy. So let's say, okay. The last thing we need to check before we test all of this inside of Lightroom is our touch ring. So back to functions, again, making sure Lightroom is selected. Let's choose the touch ring if you have it. So my first thought was, well, I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna change this to the keystroke of the right and left bracket keys, which are the shortcuts to make your brush bigger or smaller when using the adjustment brush or the spot removal tool, very handy. But I thought, you know what, I'm gonna test this first because something tells me that if I leave this set to the default of auto scroll and zoom, it actually might change my brush size the way I want. And it turns out it did, but I'll demonstrate that in a moment. That way, I can use it for auto scroll zoom in the library module and for brush size when I'm using one of those tools in the develop module, which is mind blowing to me because that makes it kind of a two for one. Whereas if I had changed this to the right and left bracket keys, I would not be able to do that. So that came with some experimentation, but we'll see that as we test out all of our shortcuts. Okay, it's time to jump over to Lightroom. Let's go back to the library module. Just click to get rid of those shortcuts. I already feel like I've made a mistake <laughs> before I even get started because the first thing I'm going to do is press E to get into loop view and I had to press my keyboard to do that. But okay, that's fair. I want to test my buttons on my pen. So I'm going to press the bottom button and it set that image to rejected. I like to turn on my filters so that when I set something to rejected, it disappears from my view. So let's try that again. I'm just going to click that button and yes, it's setting these as rejected, which is good. That means it's working. Then I can use my arrow keys to scroll through these images and then click to set as rejected. Oh my goodness. What if I forget what I set this to? Five fingers. Wow. I don't know if I can get used to this. On my Wacom tablet, swipe down and I can see import overlay shift auto scroll zoom spot. I'm just reading what I've programmed in. But if you forget, you have to have a way to quickly access this. If you do not have the touchpad, then I would recommend that you program the settings into one of your keys or the pen itself. Okay, so let's say I have called this session and I decide I want to take one of these images into the develop module, I'm going to press the top button on my pen and it worked it sent me to the develop module so that's good next i'm going to press the top key which i assigned command shift i for import and it's indeed taken me to the import dialog box let's press the bottom button i programmed command shift e for export so it should bring up the export dialog box which it did i'm going to use my five finger trick and I just wanted to show you that I'm going to use the adjustment brush button and I programmed it into that button for a very specific reason. I use it all the time. And I like that button because it's the one that has the tactile piece on it so you can feel it really quickly. So let's click out of here, press that button. I'm in the library module. So in theory, what should happen is it takes me, yes, to the develop module and then it gives me that tool. And while we're here and we have a brush, let's test out our touch ring settings. So remember, I left it at the default because I had a feeling that if I did this, it, it would in fact change the size and it does. That is extremely useful. Now the button above it, I programmed as shift. And the reason I did that is because if I hold that button and use my touch ring, I can alter the feather. Again, I do a ton of retouching, so this is really useful to me to be able to quickly change the brush size and feather using my tablet. I wanna go back to my grid. I've gotta press G on my keyboard. Again, I'm thinking, hmm, I might wanna program that into something. I don't know where, I'm running out of space. 
but that's okay. I just wanted to experiment with the touch ring inside of the library module. You can see that it simply scrolls through your images. I wonder if we're on one image in loop view, what the touch ring, oh, it scrolls through the image. Actually, I think that could be very useful. How do you know what a key is going to do? Well, sometimes it's very obvious and other times you have to experiment and see. I think it's very useful that we can use this touch ring for multiple functions inside of Lightroom without having to change it at all, just leaving it at the default setting. The last thing I need to, actually there are two things. Let's take this back into the develop module by pressing the top button on my pen. And I'm going to just quickly change this to black and white so that I can test the eraser on my pen by clicking it to see if I, yes, I'm just clicking it on my tablet and I can see the before and after. I think I'm actually going to really love that. I don't know that I would use the eraser for anything else. Actually, there are two keys left. I need to test the Q for spot removal and O for overlay. I wonder what happens in the develop module with the touch ring actually nothing unless I have my brush tool selected. But you can tap to zoom in or tap to zoom back out with your pen or if you have touch gestures, you can use your finger as well. So let's press the key to access the adjustment brush and I'm just going to mess around and add some light to her face right here. And I'm going to press the key to show my overlay and hide my overlay. I use that constantly. I also programmed this into the top key that has the tactile feel to it. So I'm using that K and O pretty often. I have a feeling I'll memorize those pretty quickly. But let's press the button I assigned for spot removal and sure enough spot removal comes up and guess what? The touch ring works for the size of the brush. Let's test out our shift with the touch ring. Oh interesting. I'm pressing shift I'm pressing the key for shift with the touch ring and it is not altering the feather. Okay, that's slightly disappointing, but I'm not going to cry about it. I think it was kind of a bonus that it worked anyway. I would just have to come over here and adjust my feather. I'm going to use my five finger trick so that we can see everything. Remember, you can then click on any one of these to jump back to the Wacom settings to change them. If you really didn't want to give up a key for the settings, like let's say you don't have the Intuos Pro, so you can't do the gestures and you, and you only have four keys with the regular Intuos. I think what I would do is maybe sketch this out on a piece of paper and just have it in front of me until I memorized it. And you will memorize it. If you begin using it in Lightroom and it's not working for you, continue to make adjustments until you feel like, okay, this is going to work for my workflow. And then spend some time using it you'll memorize it. It will become muscle memory. You will be so efficient. It will be really fun to use. I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know how you're using some of these buttons because if we all share, then others might get some ideas as well. And last but not least, I want to quickly cover pressure sensitivity using the tablet inside of Lightroom. I'm going to press my key to access my adjustment brush and I'm going to increase the exposure significantly, and I'm going to make sure that my flow and my density are both set to 100. If I gently brush over the tablet, I add a little bit of light to her face, but if I press harder with more pressure, I can obviously build up that adjustment to add more light. I find this to be incredibly helpful when dodging, burning, using skin retouching, teeth whitening, enhancing the eyes, really most anything that has to do with retouching. I'm just going to delete this mask and add another one. And I'm going to pull down on the exposure just to show you a burn effect. I'm pressing pretty hard on the tablet and it's creating that dark line. I'm going to undo that and just brush a lot lighter and you'll see that the adjustment is lighter. This means that not only can I build up adjustments, but I'm going to leave my flow and my density always set to 100. So whatever I'm using, that's my 
upper limit. But again, if I press harder on the tablet, I will see more of an effect. And if you brush lighter, you will see less of an effect, essentially at a lower opacity. I recommend you experiment with this, but this is one of the best and most exciting features of the Wacom tablet.